Gabriel's eyes flashed with rage as he watched the garbled transmission of the insectoid Zarantine bastards, brutally shocking his girlfriend Elena with electroprods, not knowing they had just kidnapped the lover of humanity's greatest super-soldier. The grizzled veteran had to restrain himself from crushing the comm device, displaying the Zarantine's cruelty. Despite being on a critical covert mission for the Galactic Council, Gabriel knew he would abandon everything to save Elena from the sadistic aliens. As he strode purposefully towards the Council's hangar to steal their prototype stealth ship, Gabriel's superior officer, Admiral Zane, confronted him. I can't let you throw away your mission for one woman, Gabriel. The Zarantine have built a doomsday weapon that will wipe out the Council's homeworlds. Taking that out is our only shot, Zane said sternly, but with an undertone of sympathy. They took Elena to force us to back off. I'm going to show them why that was the worst mistake they ever made, Gabriel replied. Bring her back safe and destroy that weapon, soldier. But you're on your own. We can't risk this going official. Without provoking a galactic war, we can't win. Just then a message from the Zarantine mastermind Antares appeared, his compound eyes glinting with arrogance. I have your human female super soldier. Come and take her if you can. But first, watch as I make this primate pet scream for mercy. Gabriel's hands balled into fists as he heard Elena's agonized cries. The Zarantine had no idea of the hell they had just brought down on themselves. One way or another, he would make them pay and save both Elena and the galaxy, or die trying. Without their super-soldier, humanity was doomed anyway. This was a fight they couldn't afford to lose. Gabriel gunned the prototype stealth ship's engines, the sleek craft slicing through the void of space towards the Zarantine homeworld. Cloaking tech engaged as he hit atmosphere, rendering his approach invisible to their sensor nets. He set the ship down in a remote canyon a few clicks from the fortress. Activating optics enhancers, Gabriel surveyed the heavily guarded structure. Massive insectoid warriors wielding plasma rifles patrolled the perimeter. He needed to get inside to find Elena. Creeping closer under the cover of nightfall, Gabriel overheard a pair of guards chittering in their strange tongue. The human female's resilience to the gene splicing is remarkable. Dr. Skaxis believes unlocking her DNA is key to replicating their super-soldier abilities in our warriors, one guard clicked. Skaxis insists the human male will come for her. When he does, we'll capture him for live experimentation in the underground lab. Rage ignited in Gabriel's veins. Those sadistic bugs were experimenting on humans, on Elena. He needed to find that hidden lab. But first, a distraction. Planting remote mines at structural weak points around the fortress's outer walls, Gabriel synced the detonators to his gauntlet. He needed to get inside their systems. Jacking his armor's onboard computer into an access port, Gabriel's hacking algorithms made short work of the Zarantine's firewall. Schematics of the fortress filled his HUD, a blinking red dot indicating the concealed lab entrance. Gabriel's finger hovered over the detonator, he took a breath and pressed the button. The night lit up with fireballs as the shaped charges ripped through the fortress's stone walls. Zarantine warriors swarmed like angered wasps as alarms blared. Under the cover of the explosive chaos, Gabriel sprinted for the hidden lab entrance. Zarantine soldiers moved to block his path. Gabriel leapt into their midst, his gene-enhanced speed and strength rendering him a blur of destruction. Insectoid bodies crumpled, and exoskeletons shattered under his assault. Their plasma bolts scorched the air around him, but Gabriel moved faster than their compound eyes could track, leaving piles of twitching limbs in his wake. He reached the lab entrance and smashed through the sealed blast doors. The chamber within was cavernous and empty, save for a single cryopod. Gabriel rushed to the pod, wiping condensation from the glass. Elena's face, still and pale, greeted him. A vid screen crackled to life, and Taris's sneering visage filling the display. You're so predictable, Mammal. Did you really think we'd leave your female unguarded? She was merely bait, and now I have you both. A robotic voice echoed through the lab. Reactor breach detected. Meltdown imminent. Evacuate immediately. 
You may save your pet, Super Soldier, but know this, I will replicate your abilities in my warriors, and once I do, the Zarantine will be unstoppable. The galaxy will be mine. The screen went dark as warning lights strobed crimson. Gabriel slammed his armoured fist into the pod's manual release, the pressurised seal hissing open. He scooped up Elena's unconscious form, cradling her close. Gabriel sprinted for the exit as the lab shook itself apart, gouts of flame and shrapnel chasing his heels. He leapt through the closing blast doors just as a massive explosion consumed the lab, the shockwave hurling him across the blood-soaked ground. Staggering to his feet, Gabriel gazed down at Elena's still face through the pod's cracked glass. Antares would pay for what he'd done. Galactic domination, experimenting on humans. He'd pushed the Zarantine too far this time. Their biggest mistake was stealing the woman he loved. And now there'd be hell to pay. The galaxy had never seen what happened when you truly pissed off humanity's greatest soldier. But they were about to find out. Gabriel sped away from the Zarantine homeworld, the unconscious Elena secure in her cryopod, in the prototype ship's hold. He plotted a course for the nearby moon of Zephyrus, home to a hidden rebel base where they could regroup and plan their next move against Antares. As he guided the ship into the base's camouflaged hangar, Gabriel was greeted by a battle-hardened woman with a shock of white blonde hair. Her eyes were the colour of steel, and she carried herself with the confidence of a seasoned warrior. I'm Raven, she said, her voice as sharp as a blade. Leader of the resistance against Antares and his Zarantine scum, I see you've brought us a new recruit. Gabriel glanced at Elena's pod. She's not a recruit, she's important to me. Antares used her to get to me. Raven's eyes narrowed. Then you're the one we've been hearing about, the human super soldier. Gabriel, right? He nodded curtly. How do you know about me? The same way I know about your girlfriend there, Raven said, jerking her chin towards Elena's pod. Antares has been capturing humans with unique abilities, using them to power his doomsday weapon. Your girl isn't the first, and she won't be the last unless we stop him. Gabriel's brow furrowed. What do you mean, unique abilities? Raven led him into the base's command center, where a holographic display of the galaxy rotated slowly. The Galactic Council has been experimenting on humans for decades, trying to create the perfect soldier. You're the result of those experiments, Gabriel. Your strength, speed, resilience, they're not natural. You were made to be a weapon. Anger flared in Gabriel's chest. The Council had used him, turned him into a freak. But now wasn't the time for a reckoning. He had to focus on stopping Antares, Raven zoomed in on a red-highlighted sector of the map. We've been tracking Antares' movements, trying to pinpoint the location of his weapon facility, but we don't have the firepower to take him head-on. That's where you come in. Just then, an alarm blared through the base. Raven cursed under her breath. We've been compromised. A spy in our midst has to be. She turned to Gabriel, her expression grim. We need to evacuate before Antares' forces arrive but we can't let them get their hands on Elena or any of the intel we've gathered. Gabriel's mind raced. They couldn't risk losing Elena again or the vital information she might possess. An idea formed, risky but bold. I'll stay behind, hold off the Zarantine while you get Elena and the others to safety. If I can buy you enough time, you can escape with the intel and regroup somewhere safe. Raven hesitated for only a moment before nodding sharply. Do what you have to do, Gabriel. We'll come back for you, I swear it. As the resistance fighters scrambled to evacuate, Gabriel made a final check of Elena's cryopod. A small data chip caught his eye, nestled in a hidden compartment. He pocketed it, just as the first explosions rocked the base. Gabriel raced out to meet them head-on, a one-man army against a swarm of insectoid warriors. His enhanced reflexes and strength made him a blur on the battlefield, tearing through the enemy ranks like a hot knife through butter. But for every Zarantine he felled, two more seemed to take its place. Gabriel fought with the fury of a man with nothing left to lose, his armor slick with the blood of his foes. Just as he was about to be overwhelmed, a stolen Zarantine ship roared overhead, 
its plasma cannons cutting a swath of destruction through the enemy forces. Raven's voice crackled over his comlink. Get your ass on board, Gabriel. We're getting the hell out of here. With a final burst of superhuman speed, Gabriel leapt onto the ship's lowered ramp, the hatch slamming shut behind him as they rocketed away from the besieged base. As the adrenaline of battle faded, the reality of their situation sank in. They had escaped, but at a heavy cost. The resistance was scattered, their intel incomplete, and Antares was still out there, his weapon nearing completion. Gabriel clenched his fists, the data chip heavy in his pocket. There was only one path forward now. They had to take the fight to Antares himself, no matter the risks. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and failure was not an option. With the data chip from Elena's cryopod decrypted, Gabriel and Raven pored over the stolen intel aboard their commandeered Zarantine ship. The information was damning. Antares' doomsday weapon derived its immense power from a rare, energy-rich crystal found only on a remote, uncharted world. We have to destroy that crystal, Gabriel said, his voice hard as steel. It's the only way to stop Antares. Raven nodded already plotting a course for the distant planet. Agreed, but we'll be flying blind. The Zarantine data has no information on what we might face there. As they dropped out of hyperspace, a verdant green world filled the viewscreen. Scans showed no signs of advanced technology, only scattered primitive settlements. Gabriel and Raven exchanged a glance. This was not what they expected. They landed the ship in a clearing near the largest village, the air shimmering with strange energies. As they approached, a throng of humanoid aliens emerged to greet them. Tall and slender, their skin glowed with an inner light. Welcome, space travellers, the elder intoned, his voice echoing in their minds. We are the Nox, we have sensed your coming. Gabriel tensed, hand hovering over his sidearm. The Nox's telepathic abilities were unnerving, but Raven stepped forward, palms open in a gesture of peace. We seek a crystal sacred to your people, she said, but in the wrong hands it could bring destruction to the galaxy. The elder Zephyr regarded them with ancient knowing eyes. The crystal is indeed our most holy relic. It was gifted to us eons ago. We cannot surrender it lightly. Gabriel's frustration mounted, his genetically enhanced body coiled with tension, but Raven laid a calming hand on his arm. Please, she implored, the warlord Antares seeks to pervert the crystal's power for conquest and domination. Help us stop him. Zephyr was silent for a long moment, the weight of millennia in his gaze. Finally he spoke. I will commune with the crystal. Join me. In a sacred chamber, the crystal pulsed with blinding radiance. Zephyr placed a gnarled hand on its shimmering surface, his eyes fluttering shut. Gabriel and Raven waited with bated breath. Zephyr's eyes snapped open, his face grim. The crystal has shown me the truth of your words, and Tarry's must be stopped. But to destroy the crystal is to court catastrophe. Its death throes will rip this world asunder. Gabriel's mind raced. The crystal couldn't be moved. Attempting to do so would trigger the same cataclysmic release of energy, but maybe that energy could be redirected. Zephyr looked at him, ancient eyes boring into Gabriel's soul. It may be our only hope, but the journey will not be easy. The depths are treacherous. The heat and pressure will be immense. Raven gripped his shoulder. I'll take the ship, try to buy you some time. If Antares tracked us here, we'll have company soon. As if summoned by her words, alarms blared. Zarantine warships dropped out of hyperspace, weapons charging. At their heart was Antares's flagship, a behemoth bristling with planet-killing weaponry. Go! Raven yelled, sprinting for the ship. I'll hold them off as long as I can. Gabriel raced for the crystal chamber's heart, where a dark tunnel plunged into the planet's depths. He leapt into the abyss without hesitation, the walls shaking as the battle above commenced. The descent was a nightmare. Searing heat scorched his skin, the pressure threatening to crush him into paste. Every fiber of his enhanced body screamed in agony, but he pushed on, 
the thought of Elena and the fate of the galaxy driving him forward. In a cavern that glowed with magma, Gabriel found the crystal's root pulsing with eldritch power. With shaking hands he planted the explosives, praying his plan would work. Gabriel charged with a roar, all his rage and pain fueling him. They clashed in a storm of blows. Gabriel's raw strength pitted against Antares's advanced armor. The cavern shook, walls cracking from the force of their battle. Antares slammed Gabriel into the cavern wall, the stone shattering under the impact. You failed, human. The crystal is mine. The galaxy will kneel before the might of the Zarantine. Through a haze of pain, Gabriel saw the detonator lying mere inches from his hand. With a last desperate surge of strength, he lunged for it, fingers closing around the trigger. Not today, you son of a bitch. He thumbed the detonator, and the world erupted in fire and light. The crystal shattered, its death scream shaking the planet to its core. A geyser of blinding energy erupted from the tunnel, vaporizing Antares in an instant. The force hurled Gabriel back to the surface, his body broken but alive. As the dust settled, Raven landed beside him, the wreckage of Antares's fleet raining from the sky. She helped him to his feet, a grim smile on her face. You did it. The crystal is destroyed. Antares is dead. Gabriel looked to the sky where the Zarantine ships burned. It was a victory, but only the first step. The war was far from over. We have to keep fighting. For Elena. For all of us. Zephyr and the Nox emerged, awe and gratitude in their glowing eyes. You have saved us all, Zephyr said. The galaxy owes you a great debt. Gabriel shook his head. We're not done yet. There's still work to be done, still people to save. He turned to Raven, fire in his eyes. Let's get back out there. We've got a resistance to rebuild and a war to win. The stolen Zarantine ship blasted off, carrying two battered heroes and the hope of the galaxy. The fight against the Zarantine had only just begun, but with Gabriel and Raven leading the charge, anything was possible. They set off to rejoin the scattered resistance, ready to take the fight to the enemy once more. As the stolen Zarantine ship touched down at the rebel base, Gabriel rushed to the medical bay, his heart pounding. He burst through the doors to find Elena sitting up on a bed, confusion etched across her face as a medic ran scans. Elena! Gabriel crossed the room in two strides, gathering her into his arms. She returned the embrace, but tentatively, like she wasn't quite sure who he was. Gabriel! Her voice was small, lost. What happened? The last thing I remember is being at home, and then... She shook her head, wincing. Before he could say more, the door hissed open, and Admiral Zane strode in, his face like a thundercloud. Gabriel, we need to talk. Now. In the hallway, Zane rounded on Gabriel. Do you have any idea what you've done? The Council is in an uproar. They're demanding answers about your unsanctioned mission and the destruction of that crystal. Gabriel's fists clenched. The Council can't seriously be considering a peace treaty with the Zarantine, not after what they did to Eleanor, to who knows how many other humans. Zane dragged a hand down his face. The negotiations were meant to end this conflict before it escalates further. Your actions have jeopardized that. Antares can't be trusted, Gabriel snarled. I've seen firsthand the experiments they were conducting, the plans they have for galactic domination, the Council is making a huge mistake. Then prove it, Zane challenged. If you can bring me concrete evidence of the Zarantine's true intentions, I'll do what I can to stall the Council. But Gabriel, don't make me regret this. Gabriel nodded curtly. I won't let you down, sir. As Zane left, Gabriel turned to find Raven leaning against the wall, arms crossed. I hope you've got a plan, hero, because from where I'm standing... We're screwed six ways to Sunday. Gabriel's jaw tightened. We need intel, hard evidence the Council can't ignore, and I think I know where to start. He outlined his plan to infiltrate a Zarantine communications hub and intercept their transmissions. Raven listened, her expression unreadable. It's risky, she said at last, but it might be our only shot. I'm in. As they prepared to leave... Eleanor appeared in the doorway, her eyes wide. 
You're going back out there, aren't you? Her voice trembled. Gabriel, please, I can't lose you again. He kissed her then, pouring all his love and desperation into it. For a moment, the galaxy fell away, and it was just the two of them, clinging to each other like a lifeline. Then Gabriel stepped back, steeling himself. I love you, he whispered. And then he was gone, striding towards the hangar with Raven at his side. At the communications hub, Gabriel and Raven moved like shadows, slicing through the Zarentine's defenses with practiced ease. They reached the central data core, and Raven set to work, hacking into the system, her fingers flying over the interface. Just then alarms blared and the door exploded inward. Zarentine soldiers poured into the room, plasma rifles blazing. Gabriel leapt into action, his enhanced reflexes turning him into a blur of motion. He dodged and weaved through the hail of plasma bolts, closing the distance to the Zarentine line in seconds. He lashed out with devastating force, bones shattering under his blows. A Zarentine warrior swung its rifle like a club, but Gabriel caught it, wrenching the weapon from its grasp and turning it on its former owner. Blue blood spattered the walls. Raven, Gabriel called over the chaos, how much longer? Almost there, she shouted back ducking as a plasma bolt sizzled over her head. Just need a few more seconds. But the Zarentine kept coming, an endless tide of chitinous bodies and slashing claws. For every one Gabriel put down, two more took its place. He was being driven back, step by step, the sheer weight of numbers threatening to overwhelm him. Just as he was about to be overrun, a shimmering figure appeared at his side, twin plasma blades flashing. The newcomer moved with preternatural grace and speed, cutting through the Zarentine like a scythe through wheat. In moments the room was still, the floor littered with broken Zarentine bodies. The figure turned, deactivating its cloaking field, and Gabriel's eyes widened. Zephyr? he asked incredulously. The Nox elder inclined his head. I owed you a debt, Gabriel. Consider it repaid. Raven appeared at Gabriel's side, a data chip clutched in her hand. I got it. Everything we need to prove what the Zarentine are planning. Zephyr's face was grave. I fear it may be worse than you know. The data you've gathered, it shows that Antares survived. He's been rebuilding his forces in secret. Zephyr met his gaze, ancient eyes full of sorrow. An all-out assault on the Galactic Council headquarters, he means to seize control of the galaxy once and for all, and with the element of surprise on his side. Gabriel's heart pounded as the stolen Zarentine ship screamed back towards the rebel base. Zephyr's dire warning about Antares' resurrection and impending attack echoed in his mind. They had to warn the Galactic Council before it was too late. But as they dropped out of hyperspace, a scene of utter chaos greeted them. Zarentine warships swarmed the base, disgorging hordes of insectoid warriors. Explosions bloomed across the complex, the vacuum of space swallowing their thunder. No, Raven cried, her face ashen. We're too late. Antares beat us here. Gabriel gripped the controls, his knuckles white. We have to get down there. The Council, the Resistance, Elena. They're all in danger. Zephyr placed a calming hand on his shoulder. Remember, Gabriel, you are humanity's champion. The galaxy's fate rests on you. Gritting his teeth, Gabriel plunged the ship into the maelstrom. Plasma blasts hammered their shields as they carved a path through the Zarentine fighters. Gabriel flew like a man possessed, his enhanced reflexes pushing the ship to its limits. They hit the landing pad hard, the ship skidding to a smoking halt. Gabriel was out the hatch before the engines died, plasma rifle in hand. Raven and Zephyr followed close behind. The base was a war zone. Resistance fighters clashed with Zarentine warriors in brutal close-quarters combat. Gabriel waded into the fray, his rifle spitting blue fire. Insectoid bodies crumpled under his onslaught. A flash of movement caught his eye. A lone fighter craft dwarfed by the Zarentine dreadnoughts danced through the void with impossible grace. It wove between plasma blasts, peppering the enemy ships with precision strikes. Elena! Gabriel breathed, 
Somehow, impossibly, she was out there, fighting for them all. A cold dread gripped Gabriel's heart. Elena was a beacon of hope, but she was also a target. He had to reach her before Antares did. A Zarantine dropship, larger than the others, caught his eye. It was headed straight for Elena's fighter, its guns blazing. Gabriel didn't hesitate. He sprinted for the nearest Zarantine shuttle, Raven hot on his heels. They blasted the insectoid pilot and leapt aboard, Gabriel wrenching the controls skyward. They screamed after the dropship, plasma cannons hammering its shields. The dropship ignored them, its focus solely on Elena. Gabriel's mind raced. He couldn't shoot it down, not without risking Elena. He had to board it. Raven, take the controls, he shouted, already moving towards the airlock. She nodded grimly, sliding into the pilot's seat. Gabriel hit the airlock controls and was instantly sucked into the void. He activated his armor's thrusters, propelling himself towards the dropship. The hull loomed before him. He slammed into it, magnetic grips locking him in place. His plasma blade flared to life, carving a molten hole in the ship's side. Alarms blared as Gabriel leapt through the breach. Zarantine warriors swarmed towards him, plasma rifles crackling. Time seemed to slow. Gabriel felt a clarity descend upon him, a crystalline focus born of desperation and raw need. These monsters stood between him and Elena, between him and stopping Antares. Gabriel moved like Quicksilver, his rifle and blade an extension of his will. He danced through their ranks, leaving a trail of shattered chitin and sparking limbs. Plasma bolts sizzled past, his genetically enhanced speed letting him flicker between them. The bridge doors loomed before him. He smashed through them like a human battering ram, the twisted metal screeching in protest. And there at the center of the chaos stood Antares. The Zarantine mastermind turned slowly, his compound eyes glinting with malice. Ah, the human weapon, Antares hissed. Are you ready to die, mammal? Gabriel leveled his rifle, his voice deadly calm. No, I'm ready to end this once and for all. They clashed like titans, Gabriel's superhuman strength pitted against Antares's chitinous armor. Consoles shattered and bulkheads dented under their furious blows. But something was different. Gabriel could feel it coursing through him, a righteous fury tempered by icy focus. This wasn't just about him anymore. It was about Elena, about the resistance, about every free being in the galaxy. He was fighting for something greater than himself, and with that knowledge came a new reservoir of strength. Gabriel pressed his attack, driving Antares back with a relentless onslaught. The Zarantine warlord's blows grew desperate, his composure cracking. In a last frantic gambit, Antares lunged for a control panel. His claw stabbed down on a flashing button. A hologram flared to life, depicting the galactic council chambers. The council members sat in their high seats, unaware of the impending doom. Behold my triumph, Antares crowed. The fools think they can make peace with me, but I have a surprise for them. He held up a small pulsing device. A neural relay keyed to their unique brain patterns. One press and they'll become my puppets. The galaxy will be mine. Gabriel's blood ran cold. He hurled himself at Antares, desperation lending him speed. They grappled for the device, claws and fists tearing at each other. Sparks flew as they smashed against the bridge consoles. Gabriel's hand closed around the neural relay. With a roar of triumph, he wrenched it free from Antares's grasp. The Zarantine warlord staggered back, his eyes wide with shock. Gabriel stood tall, the device clutched in his fist. It's over, Antares, Gabriel snarled. Surrender, or I'll use this on you. See how you like being a puppet. Antares' gaze darted to the viewscreen, to the Zarantine ship still swarming the base. A cruel smile twisted his mandibles. You think you've won, Mammal? My warriors will never stop. They'll burn this base to ashes. Your resistance is doomed. Gabriel's grip tightened on the neural relay. He thumbed the activation switch the device thrumming with baleful energy. Antares' eyes widened in true fear. With the neural relay active, Gabriel's threat was all too real. Slowly, reluctantly, 
the Zarantine warlord reached for the comms panel. All units, stand down, he grated out, each word seeming to cause him physical pain. He found Elena amidst the wreckage, her fighter battered but intact. She leapt into his arms, her embrace fierce and desperate. I thought I'd lost you, she whispered, her voice choked with emotion. Never, Gabriel vowed, I'll always come back to you. Raven and Zephyr joined them, their faces weary but triumphant. For a moment they allowed themselves to bask in the hard-won victory. But the moment was shattered by an incoming transmission. Admiral Zane's hologram flickered to life, his expression grave. Gabriel, we've got a problem. The Council is moving ahead with the peace talks. They don't know about Antares's deception. Gabriel's fist clenched around the neural relay. After everything they'd been through, the Council was still walking blindly into Antares's trap. He looked to Eleanor, to Raven and Zephyr. In their eyes he saw the same determination that burned in his own heart. Then we'll just have to crash that party, Gabriel said, a grim smile on his lips. Antares may be beaten, but this fight isn't over, not by a long shot. He turned to face the stars, the weight of the galaxy on his shoulders. One final mission, one last chance to save everything they held dear. Failure was not an option. They would succeed or die trying. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and Gabriel would be damned if he let it fall. With a nod to his companions, he strode towards their waiting ship, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The final battle was about to begin. The council chambers hummed with anticipation as dignitaries from across the galaxy gathered to witness the historic peace treaty signing between the Galactic Council and the Zarentine Empire. Gabriel, Raven, Zephyr and Elena moved silently through the shadows, their presence masked by Zephyr's advanced stealth technology. As they neared the chambers, a group of council members stepped into their path, their eyes glazed and movements jerky. Gabriel tensed, recognizing the signs of mind control. Plantaris has already gotten to them, he hissed. He must have a mole inside the council. Raven nodded grimly. Zephyr and I will find the mind control devices and shut them down. You two get to that signing ceremony and stop it before it's too late. Gabriel and Eleanor burst into the council chambers just as the Zarentine ambassador Zelos was about to sign the treaty. He held up a data chip, the evidence of Antares's betrayal glinting in the light. Zelos's face contorted in a sneer. Lies, he spat. This human is a warmonger trying to sabotage our chance for peace. The council erupted in a cacophony of shouts and accusations. In the chaos, Zelos reached beneath the podium and activated a hidden device. The mind-controlled council members turned as one, their eyes locking onto Gabriel and Elena. Kill the humans, Zelos commanded, his voice cold. The council members surged forward, their movements unnaturally fast and strong. Gabriel and Elena fought back to back, their superhuman reflexes and strength put to the test against the onslaught of mind-controlled attackers. Gabriel sent a council member flying with a bone-shattering punch, while Elena incapacitated two more with a lightning-fast kick. But for every opponent they defeated, another seemed to take their place. Even with their enhanced abilities, they were being overwhelmed. A plasma bolt sizzled past Gabriel's head, singeing his hair. He spun to see a squad of Zarentine guards pouring into the chambers, their weapons blazing. Galena, get down, he yelled tackling her to the ground as a barrage of plasma fire ripped through the air above them. They rolled to their feet, ducking and weaving through the hail of shots. The air reeked of ozone and burnt flesh. Council members and Zarentine guards alike fell under the onslaught, the floor slick with blood. Just as Gabriel thought they couldn't hold out any longer, the mind-controlled council members suddenly jerked and went limp, their eyes clearing. Raven and Zephyr had succeeded in disabling the devices. Zelos let out a scream of rage. No, I won't be defeated by a pack of primitive apes. He fumbled beneath his robes and pulled out a small detonator. With a manic laugh, he pressed the button. 
explosions tore through the chambers as the mind control devices overloaded, killing several council members in a spray of shrapnel and fire. In the smoke and confusion, Zalo seized Admiral Zane, pressing a plasma pistol to the old man's head. Surrender, Gabriel, Zelo snarled, or your precious Admiral dies. Gabriel froze, his mind racing. He couldn't let Zane die, but if he surrendered, the galaxy was doomed. Elena gripped his arm, her eyes fierce. Gabriel, the device, she whispered urgently. Use Antares' own weapon against him. Understanding dawned in Gabriel's eyes. In a blur of motion, he drew the mind-control device he'd taken from Antares and lunged towards Zalos. The Zarantine ambassador fired, the plasma bolt searing past Gabriel's cheek, but Gabriel was faster. He slammed the device against Zelos' neck and activated it. Zelos stiffened, his eyes going blank, and the plasma pistol clattered to the floor. Zelos obeyed robotically, his arms falling to his sides. Zane staggered away, coughing in the acrid smoke. Gabriel turned to the surviving council members, holding up the data chip once more. This is the proof of Antares' treachery, he declared. The Zarantine never wanted peace. They only wanted conquest. In light of this evidence, and the Zarantine's blatant attack on this council, we have no choice but to cancel the peace treaty and support the resistance in their fight against Antares's tyranny. A ragged cheer went up from the resistance members, but Gabriel couldn't bring himself to join in. His eyes met Elena's, and he saw his own weariness and determination reflected there. They had won a battle, but the war was far from over. Antares was still out there, and as long as he threatened the galaxy, Gabriel would not rest. He would hunt down that insectoid monster and bring him to justice, no matter the cost. Gabriel reached out and took Elena's hand, their fingers intertwining. Together they turned to face the shattered council chambers and the challenges that lay ahead. In the wake of the council's near disaster, Gabriel and his team found themselves with little time to rest. Admiral Zane tasked them with a new mission, track down Antares and bring him to justice. Zalos, his mind now his own, stepped forward. I can help, I know how Antares thinks, where he might hide. Gabriel nodded curtly. Then let's get to work. They pored over star maps and intercepted transmissions, piecing together a trail of clues. Zalos's insider knowledge proved invaluable, and soon a pattern emerged. Antares was gathering resources in a remote, uncharted region of space. There, Zelos pointed to a dense asteroid field. That's where we'll find him. The team set out in their ship, navigating the treacherous field with Elena at the helm. Her piloting skills, honed in the heat of battle, guided them through the tumbling rocks. Deep within the field they found it, a hidden Zarantine research facility, built into the heart of a massive asteroid. They docked at an airlock, cutting their way inside. The facility's halls were eerily quiet, the only sound the hum of machinery. Gabriel took point, his enhanced senses on high alert. Raven and Zephyr flanked him, weapons ready. They hacked into a terminal, and the horrifying truth unfolded before them. Antares had been experimenting with human and Zarantine DNA, trying to create a new breed of super-soldier. My God, Elena breathed, he's insane. A skittering sound echoed down the corridor. Gabriel spun just as a nightmare burst from the shadows. It was vaguely humanoid, but warped and twisted, chitin fused with flesh. It screeched and lunged, claws outstretched. Gabriel met it head-on, his strength pitted against its unnatural power. They crashed into the wall, the creature's claws raking his armor. He seized its head and wrenched, the sickening crack of vertebrae echoing off the metal walls. More of the abominations emerged, a horde of twisted flesh and razor-sharp chitin. The team opened fire, plasma bolts searing through the air. One of the creatures leapt at Raven, bearing her to the ground. Its claws punctured her armor, drawing blood. She screamed in pain and fury, grappling with the monstrosity. Zephyr was there in an instant, his form shimmering and changing. He became a being of pure energy, enveloping Raven and the creature. There was a blinding flash, and the abomination crumbled to ash. Zephyr reformed, cradling Raven's wounded form. 
I can heal her, he said, his voice resonating with power. But I need time. Gabriel and Elena closed ranks around them, fighting back the tide of horrors. They pushed forward, carving a path through the facility, leaving a trail of broken bodies in their wake. At last, they reached the heart of the facility, Antares Laboratory. The insectoid warlord stood amidst tanks of bubbling liquid, each containing a twisted, half-formed thing. So you're too late, Antares hissed, his voice now more machine than living being. My army is ready. The galaxy will be mine. They clashed like titans, Gabriel's raw power against Antares' cybernetic enhancements. Consoles shattered, and tanks burst under the fury of their battle. As they fought, Eleanor and Zephyr darted to the room's power core. We have to destroy it, Eleanor said. Bring this whole place down. Zephyr nodded, his form shifting once again. He merged with the core, his energy disrupting its rhythms. Alarms blared as the core destabilized. Gabriel drove his fist into Antari's chest, ripping out a sparking tangle of wires and tubes. The warlord staggered, Icor leaking from the wound. Gabriel seized his moment. He lunged, ripping off Antares's cybernetic arm and bearing him to the ground. It's over, he growled. But Antares laughed, a broken, static-filled sound. You think you've won, you've already lost. His remaining hand slammed down on a console. A cold voice filled the room. Self-destruct sequence initiated. They ran, racing through the shuddering facility as explosions bloomed behind them. They barely made it to their ship before the asteroid tore itself apart, consuming Antares and his abominations in a storm of fire and shrapnel. As they fled the asteroids, Gabriel stared out at the stars, his face grim. Antares was gone, but his legacy remained, the secrets of Gabriel's own creation, the dark truth of his powers. He clenched his fists, a new determination burning in his heart, he would find the truth no matter where it led him, and he would use his abilities to protect the galaxy to ensure that monsters like Antares could never threaten it again. The fight was far from over, but with his team beside him, Gabriel knew they would face whatever challenges lay ahead, together. As Gabriel and his team stood before the Galactic Council, the chamber erupted in thunderous applause. The councillors rose to their feet their faces beaming with gratitude and awe. Gabriel, Elena, Raven, Zephyr, Admiral Zane addressed them, his voice booming through the hall. Your bravery and sacrifice in defeating Antares and destroying his abominable research have saved countless lives and preserved the freedom of the galaxy. The Council owes you a debt that can never be repaid. Gabriel nodded solemnly, the weight of their victory tempered by the knowledge of the price they'd paid. Elena squeezed his hand, her touch a comforting anchor amidst the sea of emotions. But the celebration was cut short as a holographic projection flickered to life in the center of the chamber. A Zarantine warrior, his exoskeleton adorned with the insignia of a high-ranking general, stood before them. I am Kral, he declared, his voice dripping with malice. And I do not recognize the authority of this council. The planet Zathora is now under my control, and we declare ourselves a free and independent nation. The councillors murmured in shock and outrage, but Kral ignored them, his compound eyes fixed on Gabriel. I was Antares' most trusted general, he hissed, and I will finish what he started. Even now my forces are amassing on Zathora, armed with a weapon far more powerful than Antares' pitiful experiments. The galaxy will soon be mine. The projection winked out, leaving a stunned silence in its wake. Admiral Zane turned to Gabriel, his face grave. Gabriel, you and your team are the only ones who can stop Krell. We need you to go to Zathora, find out what he's planning, and neutralize the threat. Gabriel looked to his companions, seeing the same determination he felt reflected in their eyes. They nodded as one. We'll stop him, Gabriel said, his voice hard as steel. Whatever it takes... The team boarded their ship and set course for Zathora, a sense of foreboding hanging heavy in the air. As they approached the planet, they saw Kral's forces entrenched across the surface, their numbers far greater than Intel had suggested. He's been busy, Raven muttered, scanning the tactical display. 
Those fortifications are heavily armed and shielded. This won't be easy. Gabriel stood, checking his weapons. When is it ever? We'll have to hit them hard and fast, find out what Kral's secret weapon is before he can use it. They landed in a remote canyon, the ship's cloaking device masking their approach. As they stepped out onto the barren, rocky surface, a wave of unease washed over them. Do you feel that? Eleanor asked, rubbing her temples. It's like a pressure in my head. Gabriel gritted his teeth, pushing back against the insidious presence worming its way into his thoughts. Kral said he had a weapon more powerful than Antares's experiments. This must be it. They moved out, picking their way through the treacherous terrain towards Kral's stronghold. As they drew closer, the mental pressure increased, becoming almost unbearable. Suddenly a squad of Zarentine soldiers emerged from behind a rocky outcropping, their weapons trained on Gabriel and the others. But there was something wrong with their movements, their eyes glazed and vacant. They're being controlled, Raven hissed, raising her rifle, just like the council members. Gabriel charged forward, his superhuman speed allowing him to close the distance before the soldiers could fire. He lashed out with a series of precise strikes, his enhanced strength sending them flying. But for every soldier he put down, two more seemed to take their place. The team fought back to back, their weapons blazing, as they cut a path through the mind-controlled horde. As they battled, Gabriel could feel the alien presence in his mind growing stronger, tendrils of thought slithering through his consciousness. He saw Elena and the others faltering, their movements becoming sluggish and uncoordinated. It's the Nexus, Zephyr gasped, his form flickering as he struggled to maintain his shape. Kral's weapon, it's taking control of our minds. Gabriel felt a surge of panic, but he forced it down. His enhanced mental fortitude, a product of the same experiments that had given him his superhuman abilities, allowed him to resist the Nexus influence. He closed his eyes, focusing his thoughts into a spear of pure willpower. With a roar of effort, he pushed back against the Nexus, driving its insidious presence from his mind. Opening his eyes, he saw Elena and the others still struggling, their faces contorted with the strain of resisting. He knew he had to act fast. Galena, Raven, Zephyr, he called, his voice cutting through the chaos of battle. I have a plan, but I need you to trust me. They looked to him, their eyes clear for a moment. Elena nodded, her faith in him unwavering. The Nexus must have a power source, Gabriel said, his mind racing. If you can find it and destroy it, it should weaken Kral's control. I'll keep him occupied. Gabriel, no, Elena pleaded, realizing what he intended. You can't face him alone. With a final desperate kiss, Gabriel turned and sprinted towards the heart of Kral's stronghold, the place from which the Nexus's power emanated. Behind him, he heard the sounds of renewed battle, as Eleanor and the others fought to break through to the power source. He smashed through the outer defences, his superhuman strength making short work of the reinforced blast doors. Inside, he found himself in a vast, circular chamber, its walls lined with pulsing conduits and glowing control panels. And there in the centre stood Kral. The Zarentine general was encased in an elaborate harness, his body connected to the nexus by a web of pulsing cables, his eyes glowed with another worldly light, his mind fully merged with the artifact's power. Gabriel felt the full force of Kral's Nexus-enhanced telepathy slam into his mind, a tidal wave of psychic energy that threatened to sweep away all thought and reason. He staggered, his vision blurring. But he refused to yield. With a roar of defiance, Gabriel charged forward, his body a blur of motion as he closed the distance to Kral. The Zarentine general lashed out with bolts of psychic force, but Gabriel dodged and deflected them, his reflexes enhanced to superhuman levels. They clashed in a flurry of blows, their minds locked in a battle as fierce as their physical struggle. Gabriel could feel Kral's thoughts boring into his own, seeking to dominate and control. In desperation, Gabriel opened his mind, allowing Kral's consciousness to flow into his own. It was a dangerous gamble, but one he had to take. As their minds merged, 
Gabriel saw flashes of Kral's memories. He saw a human man strapped to a table in a lab, not unlike the one Gabriel had been experimented on in. He saw that man twisted and broken, his mind reshaped by Antari's cruel manipulations. And he saw a flicker of the man Kral had once been, a good man who had fought against the darkness Antares had instilled in him, a man who, deep down, still yearned for redemption. Kral, Gabriel gasped, his voice strained with effort. I know what Antares did to you. I know the pain you've endured. But you're not his pawn. You're not a monster. You're a man, and you have a choice. For a moment, Kral's assault faltered, his glowing eyes widening. Gabriel pressed on, pouring every ounce of his will into his words. You can end this, Krell. You can be free of Antares's influence, free of the Nexus's control. Help me destroy it, and we can put an end to this madness. Krell's face contorted, a war raging behind his eyes. Then, with a roar of anguish and rage, he ripped the cables from his harness, severing his connection to the Nexus. The chamber shook with the force of a distant explosion and Gabriel felt the Nexus's presence in his mind waver and dissipate. Eleanor and the others had succeeded in destroying the power source. Gabriel and Kral, united now in purpose, fought their way to the Nexus's core, a pulsing mass of ancient technology and eldritch energy. The artifact's defences lashed out at them, but they pressed on, their determination unbreakable. At the core, they found Elena, Raven and Zephyr, Battered but triumphant, the power source lay in ruins, the Nexus's strength fading fast. Before Gabriel could stop him, Kral plunged his hands into the Nexus's core, his body convulsing as he channeled the artifact's remaining power into himself. With a final, defiant scream, he released it all in a cataclysmic blast of energy. The explosion ripped through the chamber, a searing wave of light and heat that consumed everything in its path. Gabriel threw himself over Elena, shielding her with his body as the world around them disintegrated. Then, as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. Gabriel staggered to his feet, his body aching and battered but alive. He looked around, taking in the devastation. The Nexus was gone, reduced to a smoldering crater. Kral's stronghold lay in ruins, his army broken and scattered, and of Kral himself there was no sign. He had given his life to destroy the artifact, to undo the damage he had wrought. Gabriel felt a hand on his shoulder and turned to see Elena, her face streaked with dirt and blood, but her eyes shining with love and relief. Raven and Zephyr stood beside her, their expressions mirroring hers. It's over, Gabriel said, his voice raw with exhaustion and emotion. We won? But even as they picked their way through the rubble, back to their waiting ship, Gabriel couldn't shake the feeling that their journey was far from over. Kral's final words echoed in his mind, a parting gift from a fallen warrior. Oh, you must uncover the truth, Gabriel, Kral had whispered in his mind, even as the Nexus tore him apart. The truth of your origins, of the experiments that made you what you are. Only then will you truly be free. Gabriel looked out at the stars the vastness of the galaxy stretching before him. Somewhere out there were the answers he sought, the key to understanding his past and his purpose. And he would find them, no matter the cost. For himself, for Elena, and for all those who had sacrificed so much in the name of freedom. Their fight was far from over, but together they would face whatever challenges lay ahead. As long as they had each other, there was nothing they couldn't overcome. As the stolen Zarentine ship touched down on Earth, Gabriel couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The once familiar skyline of New York City had changed, the towering skyscrapers now interspersed with sleek, unfamiliar structures. Eleanor placed a hand on his shoulder, her brow furrowed with concern. Something's different, she said, voicing his own thoughts. They disembarked, Zephyr's cloaking tech shielding them from prying eyes, but as they made their way through the city streets, the changes became impossible to ignore. Everywhere they looked, they saw soldiers, but not just any soldiers. These warriors moved with the same uncanny speed and grace that Gabriel possessed, their eyes glinting with the telltale signs of genetic enhancement. 
How is this possible? Raven asked, her hand resting on her plasma pistol. The secrets of your enhancements were supposed to be known only to the Council. Gabriel's mind raced, trying to piece together the puzzle. But before he could formulate a theory, a voice from his past cut through the air. Gabriel, I've been expecting you. He spun, his enhanced reflexes kicking into overdrive. There, standing amidst the bustling street, was a face he had never thought he'd see again. Dr. Eliza Novak, the scientist who had created him, who had turned him into the weapon he was today. She looked different, her once kind features hardened by the passage of time and the weight of her choices. Dr. Novak, Gabriel said, his voice tight with barely controlled emotion, what have you done? Novak smiled, but there was no warmth in it. I've perfected the process, Gabriel. I've created a new breed of soldier, one that will ensure Earth's dominance in the galaxy. She stepped closer, her eyes gleaming with a fervor that bordered on madness. And now I'm offering you the chance to become even greater, to unlock your full potential. Gabriel's fists clenched, his mind warring with itself. Part of him longed for answers, to finally understand the true extent of his abilities. But another part, the part that had grown and changed through his travels and his bonds with his team, recoiled at the thought. I, I don't know, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Elena gripped his arm, her eyes searching his face. Gabriel, you don't have to do this. We can find another way. But Novak's words echoed in his mind, the promise of power and understanding too alluring to ignore. He looked to his team, seeing the concern and fear in their eyes. I have to, he said at last, his voice heavy with resignation. I need to know the truth. Novak's smile widened, a triumphant gleam in her eye. Follow me, she said, turning and striding away. Gabriel hesitated for a moment, looking back at his team. I'll be back, he promised. Wait for me. Then he turned and followed Novak, steeling himself for whatever revelations awaited him. The procedure was excruciating, every nerve in Gabriel's body screaming as Novak's machines rewrote his genetic code. He could feel himself changing, his muscles swelling with newfound strength, his senses sharpening to an almost unbearable degree. When it was finally over, he staggered from the operating table, his body thrumming with power. But something was wrong. The world seemed colder, the colors muted. He looked down at his hands, seeing the faint tremor that ran through them. Novak circled him, her eyes appraising. I've made you better, Gabriel. Stronger, faster, smarter. You're the pinnacle of human evolution. But Gabriel didn't feel better. He felt hollow, like something essential had been stripped away. He thought of Elena, of the warmth of her smile and the fire of her spirit. But those memories seemed distant now, like they belonged to someone else. In the days that followed, Gabriel threw himself into training, honing his new abilities to a razor's edge. He was a machine, unstoppable and relentless. But with each passing day, he could feel himself slipping further away from his humanity. It came to a head during a sparring session with Raven. They had always been evenly matched, their skills honed through countless battles, but now Gabriel was a force of nature, his blows precise and brutal. He had Raven pinned, his hand at her throat when Elena's voice cut through the haze of his rage. He looked up, seeing Eleanor and Zephyr standing at the edge of the training room, their faces etched with horror and concern. Slowly he released Raven, stepping back as if waking from a dream. I, I don't know what's happening to me, he said, his voice trembling. Elena approached, her hands outstretched. This isn't you, Gabriel. The enhancements, they're changing you. But you're stronger than them. You're more than just a soldier. Gabriel looked into her eyes, seeing the love and faith that had always been there. In that moment, something shifted inside him, a flicker of his old self rekindling. You're right, he said, his voice growing stronger. I am more than this. I choose who I want to be. With a roar of defiance, Gabriel turned and stormed out of the training room, his mind set on one goal, confronting Novak and ending her experiments once and for all. He burst into Novak's lab, 
his eyes blazing with righteous fury. The scientist looked up, surprise etched on her face. Shutting you down, he growled, advancing on her. Your experiments, your enhancements, they're wrong, they're turning people into monsters. Novak's surprise turned to anger, her face twisting into a snarl. You ungrateful wretch, I made you what you are. I gave you the power to protect Earth. He lashed out, his enhanced strength making short work of Novak's equipment. Computers sparked and shattered, vials of glowing chemicals shattering on the floor. Novak screamed in rage, lunging at Gabriel with a syringe filled with a bubbling green liquid. I won't let you destroy my life's work. Gabriel caught her wrist, squeezing until the syringe fell from her grip. It's over, Novak, it's all over. As he tore through the last of the lab, a flickering computer screen caught Gabriel's eye. He paused, reading the scrolling lines of data with growing horror. Project Chimera, the synthesis of human and Xarentine DNA to create the ultimate soldier. Status, prototype phase complete. Mass production imminent. Collaborators, Dr. Eliza Novak, Earth Science Directorate. General Zekthal, Xarentine Imperial Remnant. Gabriel's blood ran cold. Novak hadn't been working alone. She had allies, Zarantine allies, and they were on the verge of creating an army of genetically enhanced super-soldiers. Novak laughed a harsh, bitter sound. What I had to do to ensure Earth's survival. The Zarantine offered me their knowledge, their technology. Together we will be unstoppable. Gabriel's fists clenched, his mind racing. He had to stop this, had to prevent the horrors he had faced from being unleashed on the galaxy once more. He activated his calm, his voice urgent as he called out to his team. Elena, Raven, Zephyr, we have a problem, a big one. As he explained the situation, he could hear the determination in their voices, the unshakable resolve that had carried them through so many trials. We're with you, Gabriel, Eleanor said, her words a lifeline in the darkness. Until the end. Gabriel nodded, steeling himself for the battle to come. They had faced impossible odds before and triumphed. They would do so again. For the sake of the galaxy, they had to. The battle raged across the sprawling complex that housed Novak's secret army, the air thick with the scent of ozone and blood. Gabriel and his team fought like demons, their weapons flashing and their powers pushed to the limit. But the enemy was relentless, wave after wave of genetically enhanced soldiers crashing against them. Many were once allies, fellow humans twisted and corrupted by Novak's experiments. Gabriel's heart ached with every familiar face he was forced to put down, every life he had to end in the name of the greater good, but he pushed on, his resolve unbreakable. Beside him, Eleanor was a whirlwind of death, her plasma blades carving through the enemy ranks. Zephyr's form shifted and flowed, his alien powers turning the tide in crucial moments, and Raven. Raven was everywhere, her rifle barking and her fists flying. She was a force of nature, unstoppable and fierce. But even the mightiest warriors can fall. It happened in an instant, a moment of distraction, a single misstep. A super-soldier, his face a twisted mockery of humanity, lunged at Elena, his blade poised to strike. Time seemed to slow, Gabriel's enhanced reflexes useless in the face of the sheer speed of the attack. But Raven was there, throwing herself between Elena and the blade. It pierced her chest, a spray of crimson staining the air. No! The cry tore from Gabriel's throat, raw and anguished. He was at Raven's side in an instant, cradling her broken body in his arms. She looked up at him, her eyes already clouding. Finish it, she whispered, her voice a ragged gasp. End this for all of us! He rose, his gaze locking on the figure at the center of the chaos. Novak, her body warped and twisted by her own enhancements, stood amidst the carnage, a cruel smile on her lips. You see, Gabriel, she crowed, this is the future, the future I have created. Gabriel said nothing. There were no words, no pithy retorts or defiant speeches. There was only the cold, hard certainty of what needed to be done. He charged, his body a blur of motion, his mind focused on a single goal. Novak met him head-on, 
her own enhancements making her a formidable foe. They clashed in a titanic struggle, the very ground shaking beneath their feet. Gabriel could feel his body straining, the enhancements that had once made him so powerful now turning against him. But he pushed through the pain, through the creeping weakness that threatened to overwhelm him. For Raven, for Elena, for the galaxy, he would not fail. With a final Herculean effort, Gabriel seized Novak, his hands locking around her throat. He squeezed, pouring every ounce of his remaining strength into the grip. Novak's eyes bulged, her enhanced body struggling against Gabriel's iron hold. But it was not enough. With a sickening crunch, her neck snapped, her body going limp. Gabriel dropped her, staggering back. It was over. The threat was ended, the galaxy safe. But the cost, the cost had been too high. Gabriel could feel it now, the toll the enhancements had taken on his body. His strength was fading, his life force ebbing away. He had given everything to stop Novak and her army, and now he knew he would give his last. Elena was at his side, her eyes wide with fear and sorrow. Gabriel, hold on, we'll get help, we'll find a way. But Gabriel shook his head, a sad smile on his lips. No, Elena, this is the end for me, but it's not the end for you or for the galaxy. He took her hand, his grip weak but steady. You have to carry on, you and Zephyr. You have to ensure that the secrets of the enhancements are never used again, that no one else suffers as I have. Tears streamed down Elena's face, but she nodded, her resolve unshakable. I will, Gabriel, I promise. He thought of Raven, of her fierce spirit and unyielding courage. He thought of Zephyr, of his wisdom and his unwavering loyalty. And he thought of Elena, of her love and her strength. They had been his anchor, his guiding light in the darkness. As his eyes closed for the final time, Gabriel felt a sense of peace wash over him. He had made a difference. He had protected those he loved. His story was ending, but theirs would go on, and through them his legacy would endure. In his final moments, Gabriel saw not the blood-stained battlefield or the broken bodies of his foes. He saw the stars, the infinite expanse of the galaxy he had fought so hard to protect. And he knew that, in the end, it had all been worth it. Every struggle, every sacrifice, every moment of pain and doubt, he had been a soldier, a weapon forged in the fires of war. But more than that, he had been a guardian, a champion. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.